Hi everybody, welcome to the seasonal dummy variables model. Again, reminder, we're going to use the company sales data um, to do this one, so make sure you open it up and it looks something like this, and we'll be on the seasonal dummy model. So what it wants us to do is estimate the following model and discuss the results. So it looks like we want predicting and sold. Um, we have our old friend, the time variable, and then in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, dummy variables. And then as a bonus, we'll check the residual plots. Like, okay, well, um, looks like we're going to need all of this. So again, copy, and then we'll move it over here, and so we'll paste it. First thing we always want to do with any sort of time series data, any models like this that we have to create T, is, is organize it and so that it's oldest to newest and create that time variable. So again, you can go to the home or the data tab. I think I did home last video, so I'll do sort and then make sure we do date, oldest to newest. And then again, to create T, we just go over here, and then the oldest gets one, next one two, next one three. Once we're there, we can double click it down. All right, and now, so one thing we don't have are these dummy variables. So right now, it has the quarter for us, but um, that's non-numeric. Right? I'm not going to be able to put that in a regression. We need to get it into the point where we have. And so hopefully you realize there's four quarters in a year. So it looks like we're going to leave out quarter four. That'll be important um, later when we talk about interpreting those coefficients. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, title this Q quarter one, and then I always put D if it's a dummy just to indicate to myself um, uh, what I'm kind of doing or if I'm looking at it in the output. And so then Q2R3, dummy variable. And again, you don't need a fourth one because we're going to refer back to the coefficients for these three to that base case or that category we left out. And so what we need to do is, essentially, if it's quarter one, I, I want this, right, this to be a one. If it's not quarter one, right, if this was not quarter one, like this one, it should be a zero, right, or if it's any other quarter. And so um, a couple different ways you could do this. Uh, um, the easiest way is just an if command. So equals if, and I'm going to go the long way. So if, if this cell equals, and then a quote, and so Q1 is what quarter one will show up in here. All right, and so if this variable equals quarter one, I want to do comma, give it a one. If that's not true, give it a zero. And so I want this to be zero. If I've done this correctly, uh, it, it's done right, everything right. And then do that command three more or two more times. So if this cell equals quarter two, one zero. If this cell equals quarter three, one zero. Um, I did want to show you that uh, you can lock these, and so rather like if you get good with these Excel shortcuts um, if you want to keep this thing from I want to drag this formula left and not have the cell reference move but when I double click it down I want it to go down and so instead of throwing uh, what we're used to is throwing dollar signs here and here um, we only need one in front of a right because that's what our columns are so it's saying lock the column don't let that move but the number can move and so if we do that um, we can make life a little bit easier, and, and let's see if this works, by dragging over and then going in here, and all we have to do is change this to, to 2 and change this to 3. And again, you could have made it actually easier if you are labeled them the same up there. But, but now it's got everything I want, right? This is a quarter 3, got a 1, now let's double click. And it's always good to check and make sure things work. So all of these are quarter 3, so they all got 1s. These are all quarter four, so I should see zero ones because I don't have a quarter four dummy, which is okay. And then I've got quarter one where I get the ones, and then a quarter two where I get the ones. Okay, so it looked like it worked. Uh, now we can run this regression, and so now let's do it. We'll do data, um, data analysis. We need regression. We'll do okay. And if you're a Mac person, um, you're going to want to keep these results on the same sheet, or your residual plots are, are going to be messed up. To be honest, it's not going to matter because I don't look much at the dummy ones, but just that con that little reminder that um, your residual plots don't work very well if you put it on a new sheet. So I'm going to do Y range. So let's predict units sold. Control or command shift down. All right, and then my X range is everything from T over to Q3. And then Control or command shift down to highlight it all. And then we did have labels, and then let's go ahead and put, and put this where we want to put it. So let's do it, uh, let's put it here. Um, and then the bonus was talk about the residual plots, so let's do it. So I'm do okay. All right, and so you should get an output like this. All right, so before I, I kind of move my attention over 
um, to the residual plots. Uh, we can just talk, uh, general these things are the same, like our goodness of fit measures are pretty consistent. Um, now it's, it's how would I look at these. So first I'm going to look at T, it's got a p-value less than 0.05. So um, this is kind of like the, the trend model we talked about. We could say as uh, time increases by one day, again remember that T variable counts up by each day. It's weird because we have quarterly data as well. Uh, let's say units sold will increase by 0 0.03 units. All right, on, let's, let's type it out, on average holding quarter constant. Because right, now I'm holding like which quarter it was actually in constant. And now we can look down like, well, let's see like which of these I, I might want to interpret. So this has a p-value of 0.71, right? So I'm 71% I'm uncertain or I'm only 29 or 28 percent confident um, that this is statistically significant. What that means is, remember, quarter four is what I left out. I cannot say or I cannot prove that there's a difference in units sold between quarter one and quarter four, because that's quarter four I left out. Um, and then uh, quarter two, kind of same thing. This is a little bit closer, so maybe if I had a significance level of, of 0.10, I could say there's a difference between quarter two and quarter four, uh, but again, we're used to a 0.05, so I won't interpret these. Quarter three, very small p-value, so here, how I would interpret that um, coefficient would be, so sale, again, you can say this a bunch of different ways, but I would say sales in quarter three are 24 units, again, I'm looking at this coefficient, units higher than in quarter four. We gotta make sure we reference back to our base case, that category we left out. So then on on average and all else constant. Right? So I've been able to show that um, there's no real big difference between, or no statistically significant difference between quarter one, two, and four. It's only a difference between quarter three and quarter four. And right? so that's the basics of a simple, this simple model. Um, Let's go look at, at our, our residual plots. So hopefully these don't freak you out. Some people it does. Just remember along this x-axis, it's just the values that your variable takes. Well, dummy variables only take zero and one. So to be honest, I just delete these. I don't really care much for them. Uh, and then I go here, and I look at this. And so what I'm looking for is, um, does that look random? And to me, I mean, that looks pretty random. Um, uh, I honestly don't see a lot of patterns there, and so we don't really need to fix it. Um, <clears throat> one other model that you could run, and this is the last thing I'll talk about, and where life gets a lot more complicated, just because, again, there's a lot going on with that log transformation, is um, what if you wanted to do LN of units sold? Uh, you could do that, right? You could do that, and it'd be easy. So let's do it really quickly. So insert, and then hopefully this is, is easy for you all now. So units sold, all right, and it's just equals LN. I'll hit this, in it, and then I'll double click it down. All right, now I can run the regression. Here's my Y, here are my X's, and so data analysis, and then regression. Um, my Y range is LN of units sold. My X range are these. Work it down, hit enter. And now I'm gonna put this on a new worksheet and do okay. All right, and why this one becomes a little bit more problematic is, so, two things. Um, so remember, this is now a log-lin log model, uh, which means a couple things. Number one, all right, um, if we are making predictions, we will need the exponential and the... Um, standard error squared divided by 2 to for the fix. All right, so if that's what our goal is. If we're interpreting coefficients, so if interpreting coefficients, all right, um, L, so the units, oops, the units sold variable will be talked about in percent uh, and three um, again this is if 
it's maybe 2a, let's do 2, or, yeah, 2a. Uh, if interpreting coefficients, we will multiply all the ones on the right hand side by 100, as long as you didn't have any other like ln in here. And so, um, for example, Alright, and so this coefficient, I would say, um, again, uh, let's assume it's statistically significant. Uh, we would say as, as time increases by one, one day, oh great, um, units sold increases by, and it's this number times 100, so looks like 0 0.0161 and then percent that's that top portion up here right, the log len model and again on average and all else constant right, same thing for the dummy variable so it looks like uh, maybe here I would say so sales in quarter one are Again, we have to multiply it by 100, so 30.339%, again, units sold is, is percent, lower than in quarter four. All right, and I guess maybe I should put three in here. I can't compare this to previous model with the given adjusted R square or standard error. Uh, these things here, right? Because in this case, Excel is predicting the natural log of units sold. And so you'd have to go through that whole process of calculating a new adjusted R square if you wanted to compare it back um, to this linear model here. So you could do that, and right, it might be that that model is more accurate, just it does require a lot of work. Um, but I figured I would show it to you that way. Um, it didn't come out of the blue if you wanted to try it. I uh, hope this was helpful.